This is Lacey Rice with KYSports.TV talking to Georgetown College head coach Bill Cronin, legendary coach for the Tigers who is entering his 21st season at the, at the college. And Coach Cronin's current record is 183 and 51. He's the all-time winning this coach at Georgetown. He's won a couple of national championships, had a couple of uh, runner-ups, and he's been uh, NAIA Coach of the Year a couple of times. And so we we're talking about one of the most successful coaches in the state of Kentucky, not just uh, in the, not just in the NAIA or not just uh, in small college in Kentucky, but all of Kentucky. So, Coach, how are you doing today? Well, Lacey, I could listen to you talk all day long. <laughs> You're going to talk like that. Thank you for all the accolades and so forth. But uh, I'm doing just fine. We just got done with practice. Uh, great day of practice. Got a great group of guys to work with. And uh, looking forward to the season coming up here in the next, uh, next week. Okay. Um, you've had some great teams at Georgetown. Not, you know, we, we've mentioned a, a couple of national championships and nat a couple of national runner-ups. But you had, I mean, a lot of other seasons um, that were highly successful record-wise. We know that, uh, I think it's probably safe for us to assume that your goal every year is national championship. Well, that's what we like to, we like to think anyway. And, and uh, it's been fun. I was very fortunate uh, early in my career as a head coach. I was able to uh, accomplish some things. And uh, that sets a bar really high. And so uh, each year you're trying to match those things, and uh, uh, year after year, you know, just one personality may change in that team, but uh, it changes the team. So uh, it's always a challenge. Uh, it's uh, you know, it's important when you set goals, and we set those goals. And uh, national championships always uh, one of those things on our mind. Okay. Uh, well, coach, um, you know, people have been talking over the last few years about these super conferences on the NCAA level. Um, I, I guess too many of them aren't familiar with a super conference called the Mid-South Conference in the NAIA. You have, what, 20 teams in that conference? Well, that's pretty accurate. Uh, we, we just added a, a number of schools from down to lower states, uh, southern states, and uh, uh, you know, it's awesome. We uh, are going to travel to Alabama this year. We're going to be in Florida next year. and. You know, it's, uh, it's allowing us to spread our wings a little bit, get in some different uh, uh, venues. Uh, we're going we're gonna to practice next week at the Crampton Bowl, which is an awesome uh, area to, uh, facility to be in. And, and so, uh, you know, we are traveling a little bit. Uh, uh, it's a great opportunity for these kids to, to, to get out and, and, and see the country. Okay. Uh, now, as far as the competition in the Mid-South, you've been primarily um, the dominant program, we would say, uh, for the, in the Mid-South. But uh, what are some of the other, um, your, your, some of your main competitors? In well, there, the, thank you for saying that. I, I, I think there's a number of schools that have really risen to the top and uh, are very, very competitive uh, year in and year out. Uh, here in the state of Kentucky, we're very, very fortunate to have a number of really solid high school football players that uh, can play at this level and be very, very competitive. And, and um, so uh, it, it gives them an opportunity to, to play this game and, and to improve and, and uh, reach new experiences. Uh, uh, of course, Lindsey Wilson is uh, very competitive here in the state of Kentucky and, and uh, Cumberland, Kentucky, Cumberland, Campbellsville, Kentucky. Uh, all these schools have been playing football now for a number of years. And, and uh, <clears throat> have really risen to the top uh, quite quite quickly, uh, to be honest with you, in comparison to how many years Georgetown's been playing. Um, right now, we're we're uh, have schools from Tennessee and and West Virginia and and all the way down to Georgia and Florida. So uh, we're covering quite a region uh, right now with our football play. Uh, uh, I think it's an awesome opportunity for young men to to come play. Well, you, you mentioned um, high school players from Kentucky. And looking at your roster, you, you have a, I, I, I didn't even try to count. When I first went to your roster and I started seeing the number, I was, I had it as a goal to start counting, but I just kind of gave up <laughs> because, because you just have so many uh, people on your roster. But the amazing thing, too, is that looking at your roster, 
the vast majority of it is Kentucky. Well, you know, the, the, the great thing about this level of football is that uh, a lot of kids can't play this level. If they really commit themselves and they really want to play and they work at it during the offseason, sometime in those four years, I believe that a lot of kids can play at this level. And, and that doesn't downgrade this level. That just gives kids more of an opportunity. And so I don't want to take an opportunity away from any young man out there that wants to commit themselves. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, my staff does an awesome job of seeing the big picture. Uh, there's more of a reason to be on this and part of this football team than just winning football games. And I think we teach a lot of life lessons. I think we do a lot of things to help that, that young man develop and, and hopefully go out and be a, a good citizen someday based on some of the things that we try to uh, uh, expect here in our, in our program. So uh, I think there's a lot of reasons to be a part. Uh, I don't think, uh, you know, uh, I should be picking and choosing, although, you know, to be competitive you have to get a certain level of, a, of, a, of an athlete to, to compete for your team. Um, well, you mentioned your vast region um, and, and, you know, seeing teams out of Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, all these other areas that are more known for football than Kentucky. Uh, but let's say you've been the dominant program. You've also had, uh, like you said, the Camelsvilles, Lindsey Wilsons, and others who also have uh, large Kentucky rosters. Um, what do you contribute to that, 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 that um, your teams are able to take Kentucky kids and compete against these kids from these so-called football states? Well, I don't know what the key ingredient is. I know that our formula for success has been finding young men that, that belong here at Georgetown College who fit into our program. I think that if you take a young man and, and he is a, a gifted high school athlete and you bring him into your program for four years, you ought to be able to develop him physically and mentally enough to make him a very competitive player by the time he leaves here. And if you're not, then you're not doing him justice. And so that's the whole idea. Uh, if we can find a person that academically fits into our curriculum here at Georgetown and uh, has, has the interest in getting his degree, um, he has to go to class, he has to do what's required of him in the, in the classroom, and, and, and then you've he, he got to get a good character individual. Uh, I want him here for four years. If he's not here for four years, then you know it's hard for me to really benefit much from him. So. Uh, I, you know, I want to recruit a, a young man that's got good character, not in trouble all the time, not somebody i got to babysit, and, and somebody who wants to learn a little bit about the game. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then obviously if you're going to be competitive, you've got to find somebody who's athletically good enough that can play at what we'd like to think a national level. We're looking for guys who are good enough that can play at that, at that national level. So it takes a coaching staff who knows what that, that level is and then tries to bring it out in them. Uh, every day. It can't be just part-time. It's got to be every day that we're, we're shooting for the stars. So um, that's kind of been our formula here at Georgetown College. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's great if I can go to Georgia and find somebody who can come in and play right away, but, it, but they have to be somebody that fits Georgetown's mentality, what the type of student athlete that Georgetown College expects us to have here. Well, um I know uh, in, in reading some things recently um, and even reading about the end of your season last year, uh, one of the things that really struck me is that you're not one of those coaches that, that sugarcoats anything. That um, at the end of the season with the uh, heartbreaking, heartbreaking last second field goal loss that uh, you just kind of kept, in, in, in uh, I guess today's vernacular, you kept it real. And you said that it's very uh, hard to justify a team, even though you only had one conference loss. But it was hard to justify um, having your particular record and making the playoffs when you have to be a certain rank in order to make it. Well, let's, let's just say I, I've been doing this a long time, and I understand the politics of it. I understand the ratings of it. When you lose late in the season, it really affects you quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, we would love to have been in the, in the playoffs a year ago, but we had some injuries that affected us throughout that last half of the season that we probably weren't that caliber of a team at that time. Mm -hmm. And obviously that's 
one of the reasons we lost that last ball game. But uh, our kids competed hard. We learned from it. I mean, you just got to learn from it. You, you know, you're, you're, you're faced with adversity all the time. Almost, every, almost daily we have some sort of adversity in our lives, and, mm -hmm. and uh, we've got to learn from it. Mm -hmm. And then we've got to move on. And I think that's what we did quite, quite quickly. We, we moved on. We had some things we had to address at the end of the season. I think we did it, and I think we've got great leadership this next year. And I think that... Uh, you know, we've rebounded well. I think our guys are going to be very competitive again this year. And, and uh, you know, all you can do is just do the best you can with what you've got. And, and so that's what we aim to do uh, year in and year out. Okay. Now, um, the Mid-South Conference um, is one of the conferences that has, a, and please correct me if I'm wrong, it has uh, two automatic bids to the NAIA playoffs. They do. The, we have enough schools in our conference that we are allowed to, uh, actually three this next year because we're going to have three divisions. So we'll have one team from each division uh, as long as they're in the top uh, top 20, mm -hmm. uh, they'll have an opportunity to compete in the playoffs. Okay. So it's a great opportunity for all the schools in our league. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be interesting to see how it all unfolds. Okay. Three divisions. I don't think I've ever heard that before in a uh in collegiate sports, so that will definitely be interesting. Well, I think somebody said that we might have the largest uh, football conference there is out there, which I don't Ooh. doubt, and uh, you know that that is interesting. Wow! Uh, so is that going to be broken down in, into um, east, west, or is it going to be broken down just? You know, uh, different teams will be in the, the three, and it'll be named something else besides a, a region. Now. Yeah, we have three. We have three divisions, and they mm -hmm. all have a name. And and we will. It's pretty much a regional thing, and, mm -hmm. and we're trying to get the schools most located in that one region to be the division. So, mm -hmm. um, I think you'll uh, you'll hear a lot about the uh, the Mid South conferences next year. Okay. Well, I know that should save on a lot of travel then for, for those things. Well, it does, but then again, it's going to extend our travel a little bit because we're going to have crossover games in each of those divisional teams. So, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, uh, one of those teams down in Florida will come up here and compete, and then mm -hmm. we'll have to go visit one of the teams in that division as well. So, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how it works out and, and uh, what it does to cost because we're all small schools, but mm -hmm. uh, I think everybody's – Pretty excited about uh, seeing how this un unfolds, and and we're excited to compete with some new teams. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Okay, okay. Um, well, looking at your um, record, it looks like you haven't had three. It looks like you haven't had more than two conference losses since 0809, and so that's a very impressive run because there are a few. Um, uh, seasons. There. No, Lisa, you're not out there to Zero. start jinxing me, are you? Oh, no, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> let's be careful. Here. <laughs> but, um, but you, let's say you, you, you've been right there at, at the top, and so um, you've been going to that, to those playoffs. Can you um, share for those people who, um, like an average person like me who didn't play college football, what is that atmosphere like? on the NAIA level going to the playoffs? Well, you know, a young man works hard throughout the year to get <clears throat> to this level, national playoffs. Um, it's a great reward to have a season that qualifies you to postseason play. And, and uh, I don't think the average person out there has any idea how much work it takes for an individual, for a student athlete or a coach or whatever, anybody on our, in our program, to achieve that level. And so once you do that, it's, uh, you know, it's quite rewarding. Uh, but then there's an, a new challenge. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you, you've got to adjust really fast because all of a sudden you're, you've got, you know, you're up again. And, and the first week it takes four rounds to get to the national championship game. So, um, you know, it's not an easy task by any means. And, um, you know, I, I often say it's very, very, you've got to be very, very lucky. Uh, a lot of times luck is a big factor in you reaching those final rounds. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, I, I think when a, a person grows up and he, he dreams about being in a national championship game, because we sit there and watch TV and watch Alabama and Notre Dame and different schools on TV and what, what a big step it is to be able to achieve something like that, then we all dream of ourselves doing that. And that's exactly what this level 
all levels give you a chance to, to live out that dream. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, it's all about the process, though. So, uh, it's been amazing to me, even though we've, we've been fortunate enough to win that championship game, it all comes back to what the, the season was like, taking those steps to seeing yourself improve week in and week out to, to become the national champion of, of anything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's all about the process, and that's more rewarding than actually that actual game and that trophy and so forth. It's, it's, uh, it's quite unique uh, once you do win that thing, uh, how you look back on it. So I keep things in perspective. Uh, it's been a neat experience. Okay, okay. And, of course, as a coach, you want, you want every player that you have to be able to experience that thing. Right. Uh, because it is something that I think you carry with you for the rest of your life. Right. Okay. Uh, Coach, can you tell us about some of your um, leaders this upcoming season? Yeah, we're very fortunate <laughs> to have uh, 30 seniors this year in our, our senior class, and it's a quality group of kids. Um, we, uh, we have elected two captains. Uh, uh, Cam Oshadi is a defensive lineman for us. Uh, a four-year starter for us here at Georgetown. He's just an awesome young man, uh, does well academically. Uh, he's from Ohio, um, up in the Columbus area of Ohio, and uh, going to be a really fine leader. The, the players listen to him. He's uh, uh, you know, very well liked by the coaches. Uh, he is truly a, a coach on the field for us. And then the second young man is also an Ohio uh, native, uh, Kyle Longworth, uh, he's a running back for us. He transferred in here uh, four years ago from Indiana University. Uh, tremendous young man. He really uh, won our hearts really fast. He started playing for us pretty quickly. Uh, been a three, maybe four year starter for us. And, and uh, you know, Kyle is, uh, you know, Tiger through and through. Uh, he believes in what we're doing in our program. He a uh, very positive young man and uh, has a lot of energy on the field. So I think, uh, I think we're blessed to have two guys that are truly captain-type uh, young men. And then we're, we're fortunate to have a number of guys that support those two in the senior class that are, are really character kids. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I don't say that lightly. I, I think that's really an important ingredient for any team. And I don't know how many games we're going to win this year and so forth, but I know one thing, we're going to have a good time doing it. And we're going to do it and give it our best, mm -hmm. uh, doing it the right way. So uh, I'm excited about the leadership that we do have. Okay. Well, you mentioned uh, the character of your kids. And uh, one that struck me in particular is uh, Mr. Cody Casey. And uh, reading uh, one of the stories about him, um, he mentioned that he had a decision to make at 19, a very mature decision to make at 19. And while he was making that decision, he was, re he was thinking about his relationship with God. That's not something I hear a lot of 19-year-olds say. And, uh, and he is a, a very, he, he's definitely been receiving accolades. Uh, you know, uh, I think, uh, you know, no, no disrespect to Georgetown College, but Georgetown College is not usually a university I would think would be in Sports Illustrated. But he made Sports Illustrated. And so, uh, can you speak a, a bit about him? Well, he's quite a young man. I'm glad you brought him up. Um, uh, it's quite an unusual story and, and one that uh, any parent, any coach, any player uh, would cringe to hear and see. Uh, what turned, turned out to be uh, more than just a traditional break, broken leg uh, from a football game it ended up uh, of being an amputation of the leg, the lower leg, and and uh, uh, you know a year ago Cody had two years ago I guess it's been now called me and said that uh, he had to make this decision and obviously uh, my heart stopped for a second and and I just couldn't believe a young man at age 19 was going to have to have to do this. It really came across to us a very routine break. And, you know, we all thought he was going to come back. He was a very gifted football player as a freshman here. Uh, started in many games. I think he was all-conference as a freshman as a corner. And uh, corner's not easy to play. Mm -hmm. uh, he's one of the, that's one of the gifted positions that you have on a football team. So Cody did it quite well as a freshman. His sophomore year, he ended up 
on special teams, uh, breaking his leg, and and um, again we thought it was going to be routine. Infection got caught into it, and and um, next thing we knew, after 11 surgeries, he's uh, looking facing this amputation. Um, so uh, I can remember going up to the hospital. It was after our last game of the season, and, and my wife and I were riding up to Columbus, uh, getting ready to go see him, and and we're trying talk amongst the two of us on how, what our approach is going to be, how do you talk to a young man and family that's going through this, and I was really disturbed not knowing how to, how to approach him, and, and no sooner do I walk into the room and Cody's got this big smile on his face, he's happy to see us, and he's cheering us up. It was just an amazing thing, and, and after uh, spending an hour, hour and a half with him, uh, you know, he was he was at ease with what was going on. He was motivated by it. He was challenged by it. He said, Coach, he said, I'm going to be back in January. I'm going to be ready to lift weights and uh, be part of the football team. Of course, at that time, I thought he meant that he was going to be a student coach or something for me, and I was all for it. But uh, back in, deep in, in the back of my mind, I knew he was going to come back and try again. Uh, and he did just that. In January, he came back. Uh, he could... Uh, barely walk, you know, he was still trying to learn the, the prosthesis and how it worked and how it fit and, and next thing I knew he's in that weight room uh, jumping, squatting, uh, doing things that everybody else was doing. You'd see him fall on the ground, he'd pop right back up before anybody could help him up and it truly inspired everybody that he came across. Um, and I think he's just a super young man. I think his uh, uh, spiritual aspect of this is what carried him through. Uh, I think now he has quite the platform to uh, speak of uh, his beliefs and his values and, uh, and they're very, very healthy. Uh, he's, uh, he's quite a unique young man and, and, uh, and, and very special in many ways. Thank you very much, uh, Coach, because uh, I would say that he, he definitely um, struck me in a way that few um, young athletes have. Um, and I, I myself been coaching other sports for a number of years, but that was very uh, motivating to me over some things I'm going through myself. So, sure. you know, made me look at things a bit differently as well. Um, well, Coach, as we get ready to wrap this up, um, can you um, can you give us a, a, a in a synopsis what your total outlook is for this season? Well, I'm excited for the season to start. Again, we start next week, so uh, we're in the thick of things now. Um, we have to stay healthy. We're, we're not real deep like most schools at this level. You, you've, uh, your first team guys are pretty good, pretty solid, and then when you have an injury or something, the next guy's got to be ready to jump in. And, and a lot of times there's a little bit of a drop-off. So every school is after, you know, they're challenged when that, that happens. And, and, you know, it's going to happen. It's all part of the game. Um, but I'm excited about our defense. Our defense has always been a strong part of uh, what we do here at Georgetown College. And Coach Housekeeper does an awesome job of putting these guys together and, and uh, teaching them from week to week, uh, uh, you know, the important roles that they have to play to, to stop an opponent. Um, I think we have a, a real solid group of guys in the defensive front. We're going to be a little bit young in the secondary, but uh, I think we have some pretty talented kids back there that will help us compete uh, to a pretty good level. So I'm excited about that. Probably our strength this year is going to be in that second level. Our linebacker level is uh, uh, pretty deep, and we've got some guys who can run. We've got some guys who got, got quite a bit of experience there, so I think we're going to be pretty strong in that second level. And, and that's going to enable us to do some different things uh, from week to week. Uh, offensively, we're, we're breaking in a new co a quarterback. You know, that was our problem a year ago. We had to uh, fall back on a couple young quarterbacks a year ago who really weren't ready to be in the, in the lineup at that time. And, and so we, uh, we struggled down the stretch last year at the end of the season. Uh, we've got a couple guys uh, uh, competing for the job. I feel good about them. I uh, spent a lot of time this summer working with them and, and they uh, committed themselves throughout the summer and last spring to, to improve and I feel good about that. Um, I think our offensive line has come together quite well. I think we're going to be uh, much more competitive up there. Uh, I think we've got a really special group of receivers, uh, both on the inside, 
uh, as well as on the outside. I think we uh, uh, are going to be very competitive there. We have some depth there. We have some guys that can uh, make some big plays from time to time. So our expectation is going to be high for them. And, uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, I think I like the, what I like best about this football team is camaraderie right now. I think from uh, position to position as well as offense to defense, I think we've got a pretty good group of guys who really uh, are loyal to one another and they, they have that friendship uh, that it takes to uh, stick together throughout a season. Uh, I, I feel good about the work ethic that I've seen during camp and, and, uh, and the energy level. I think we just got a good, good sense of energy out there on, in practice from day to day. And that's, that's the thing that allows you to improve from week to week. So those are good signs and I think some good qualities that we have to work with. Uh, I think it'll be fun. Well, um, Coach, as we end this interview, we definitely want to thank you for taking the time out to be with us. Um, and uh, we want to give you this opportunity uh, to give a shout-out to those who have been an influence in your life and uh, others who can help contribute to your success. Well, I appreciate that. I, I want to thank Georgetown College. Uh, they've given me this opportunity to be their head football coach. and. And it's been awesome. I've been here now for 21 years as a head football coach, but I've also got uh, a 10 years as an assistant coach here. So over 30 years of, of Georgetown College, and uh, uh, people are tremendous. The community is awesome, and and uh, you know the administration really wants to see us all be successful. Um, I truly uh, uh, love the aspect of the student athlete. I think that's what's so special about Georgetown and this level is that. Uh, you're truly here for a purpose, for a big picture, and and uh, I think we all contribute to that. So um, I, I'd have to reach out to them, and then my my wife, she's uh, she's my coach. She does an awesome job for me, and uh, my boys. She helped me raise three boys and a grandson. Now that we have, it's just uh, it really takes you to a different level when you have that grandson. So I've got to say uh, thanks to my wife and everything she does for my career, as well as uh, day to day and uh, come see the Tigers play. All right. Well, thank you very much, Coach. Uh, we, uh, we really enjoyed this interview, and uh, we will definitely keep an eye on Georgetown College this year and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you very much.